Welcome to Blame the Dice Wargaming. My name's Tim, and I'm going to be starting a new section that I'm going to be calling Tim's Workbench. Essentially, uh, this is going to give me an opportunity to kind of show what I'm currently working on. It also means that there's going to be kind of more manageable bite-sized chunks to show you what I'm working on on a week-by-week -week basis. And just so you can watch along, I'll be kind of showing the progress in a kind of super sped up videos and give you a view over of uh, what I've been achieving and how I've been achieving it. Plus, it gives you an opportunity to ask some questions if you want to and to make some comments, make some suggestions, which would be really welcome. Anyway, I'll show you where I'm, what I'm working on. I'll show you what I've got lined up next. And uh, hopefully we'll get some nice bite-sized videos in that you can see where I'm up to and uh, what I'm currently working on. See you in a second. So I'm currently working on a Streets of Naboo themed project. This is largely uh, TT Combat Streets of Venice uh, stuff. And obviously there's a few more bits and pieces. That's some 1 to 48 Vulture Droids that I want to be kitbashing. Uh, you can see some uh, rather lovely sculpts of Jar Jar there, which I'll explain how I did those in due course. Some scale uh, Jedi Starfighters and a questionable to scale um, arc, as well as some kind of foliage, if you will. Um, so this is kind of the progress I've achieved so far. So what I'll do is I'll put on a video so you can see how I've got the looks that I've done, uh, just with a sped up video. And everything else there is something that I am currently working on or will need more work to it. So where, there we have it, all laid out. These are all, with one exception, from the TT Combat Streets of Venice range. Uh, these are all modular buildings, so essentially when they go together, you can lay them all out in different ways, and they create a really cool looking street. The exception to this is this one here, uh, which is a sci-fi gothic, also TT Combat. So this is my workspace. These are the ones that I've kind of currently already done. So these are the buildings that I've already kind of put together. You'll be able to get some videos to show you what I've done and how I did them. So we'll be doing that shortly. Uh, and this is what remains in my to be completed pile. That's not a, sh a small amount of product to do. Uh, gonna give me lots of options. And this is what I'm gonna be doing today. My hope is I'm gonna take all the packaging off all of these and I'm gonna paint them on bulk. Now to support me with that, I have got a, this doesn't really show very well on the camera, but that is a uh, pot of paint absolutely full to the top of the right colour I need. So I'm hoping that uh, with a big old brush, I can get them all lined up along the back there, splat them in paint, and hopefully I can then kind of come back and do the, uh, the next parts. So I've made lots of progress today. All those buildings that I showed you in packs, that is all of these, all leaning east of my units whilst they're drying. I've all been painted. Now it's a really straightforward way I do it. Uh, I've got that kind of goldy brown colour shown here, deep brown for the wood and a green for the roofs. And then I've got this uh, concrete stony looking colour for anything else which I factored to be a support or pillar. So that's all of them done. Now this is one that I've done previously. Uh, the difference is here, after I've painted it, I then stipple the heck out of it. Uh, and I know it looks really messy and choppy, but what that does is that adds an awful lot of texture uh, to it. So essentially the brickwork looks a bit more, looks a little less fancy, a little less new, and a bit more grubby and run down. And I do it on essentially all of it. And I try to cr try to gradate from darker through to lighter to the top, just to make it look a bit more, a bit more realistic. Okay, now you've seen what I've been getting up to with my project this week. I'm going to do a bit of a close-up, an extreme close-up, in fact, of uh, how we're going to achieve the uh, kind of foliage look to it. I'm going to do something fairly simple, not particularly complicated, and realistically, I'm taking much more time and attention to show you what it looks like. Then, in reality, I'm much more prone to slapping things on and doing it really, really quickly. So, uh, do watch along, and if you've got any questions or comments, let's have them. See you in a second. So what I wanted to do was go over some of the finishing touches that I added to it. Now this is quite a close up of the building, there is some work to do, you can see where the, the paint needs some covering but that's fine, I'll be doing that shortly. Uh, but essentially if you look at the brickwork, it doesn't just look gold, it's got lots of different colours built into it. And I just wanted to make sure you had an opportunity to see how that was achieved. Just so if this was something you were interested in doing, you'd be able to uh, essentially do it for yourself. The paint I used was this gold colour, so this is what it started off as, a great big tub of that. 
uh, the sponge I was talking about was just your kind of regular old hobby and sponge. You can see the kind of the colours have ended up kind of stiffling on to kind of give it the, the dark to light shades. So we're not talking anything fancy. I think you can get these for dead cheap from a hobby shop or probably even a beauty shop because they're just the, the regular beauty sponges. You can rip bits off them if you need to. There's some parts where I've tried to add a bit of gold and this is just one of those pro markers uh, with the in with the metallics. Yeah, here we go. Bit of a better zoom there. <clears throat> but this has enabled me to, to build on some additional kind of coloration stuff because I could paint things but realistically I don't really fancy it. But this is dead easy and quite forgiving because if I make a mistake I can just uh, scratch it off if I'm quick. Now the only thing I will say is it just needs two coats. So next up in terms of actually achieving the look I'm going for, uh, nothing really fancy. I've got myself a top of PVA glue. Now you may have seen I've used a paintbrush before, but actually I found the inside of a Bic pen to be really, really good for this. Uh, this is just PVA mixed with water. And all I choose to do is get it lined up. And essentially if I want to achieve a vine shape, I would essentially just start drawing it on. And you can be really, really loose with this. Now I'm going to start it lower as well. So we'll do this one as a vine. time for us to get up close and look what they look see what they look like really uh, on the tabletop with some miniatures and how they inter interact in gameplay back in one moment so you get quite a lot of options with your streets of venice set up all the buildings are interlockable so uh, you're looking at a possible configuration here i'm gonna whiz through and just see what i can do and see the different effects i can get and uh, let you have a quick look at its versatility Take a different approach using the bridges to create some very large archways and essentially having a very large amount of terrain which spreads from one side of the board to the other. Or you could group them and create some much larger, uh, slightly more impressive looking buildings by linking several of them together. And alternatively you could create some kind of terrace like buildings where they're all joined on side by side where you create some very distinctive blocking terrain with some uh, access ways uh, through and some pinch points where large vehicles or larger groups would have to move through if you wanted to avoid a bottleneck. And then of course you could go for the safe bet where you've got a really solid combination of uh, everything I've discussed with some big buildings where everything's grouped together, uh, others where they're done in a kind of a long kind of terraced and others where you're using just a couple of smaller buildings just to put in an archway and then of course the large scriptorium I think it's called at the front there. TT Combat would appear to have leaned you the mind when they designed these things. The range 1 buildings, everything that is at range 1 e.g. jumpable uh, like the balconies, the maximum height is range 1. The maximum height of the roof at its pitch is range 1 and of course Anything above that is range two, and there's going to be a few things that can jump it. The nice things that you've got to take into account when you're doing this is the impact that has on some of your stuff. So your speeders, 
get the speed through just below range one getting themselves the benefit of the cover which is going to be really nice so something like the imperial walker will over the height one buildings have uh, a clear line of fire but over the height three buildings it's going to be somewhat more obscured and may struggle to see some units units such as boba fett will be able to jump up onto height one without any kind of issue and because they've got jump two we'll be able to clear even the tallest parts of it uh, which is going to give some really nice dynamics not to mention all the roof pitches are such that when you place a unit on it you don't have any issues with any wobbly bottle uh, wobbly models the same is true for speeder bikes speeder bikes will sit comfortably at whatever elevation the roof pitch sits because it's designed to be at a gradient so it's not too steep so you shouldn't have an issue placing them balconies also appear to have been designed to fit your uh, medium sized base items where you can quite easily fit your support units such as your motor launcher or your heavy support gun that you get for the rebel veterans is harder to fit and i think that's more appropriate is bases of your larger variety so your walkers your e-webs uh, they can fit in but that is a very difficult thing to do on some of them because it fits in there but on the balconies it's very very difficult to get there so i think there's a good uh, amount of thought got into the size of the balconies so it's not going to create some weird uh, nests for things that don't really belong up there as you can see the e-web struggles to fit in there, though it will if you really give it a go, but absolutely it won't fit up on the balcony. But would fit on top of the roofs. Where the roofs are flat, they usually give you enough space to fit things in very comfortably. But whilst things like the e-web wouldn't fit inside the balconies, they will fit on top of the flat roofs. So you're not completely without options. The building diameters are nearly perfect for the Legion scale, where going even moving through the buildings, you have a range one that will fit straight through the what could be arguably a difficult thing to maneuver your troops through, uh, straight through the archway, meaning that you're not going to have to deal with troops necessarily getting bottlenecked inside those gaps. And naturally a speed 2 would move you completely through it one side or the other without there being too much issue. The height is also conveniently situated to Legion. Here we've got two of the droid destroyers which were comfortably sitting inside a double archway building like that. And that is not going to test you whatsoever. And from a vehicle perspective even the biggest base vehicles will still enjoy cover behind the buildings, which seem to be almost the exact length of their bases. The tank will largely enjoy some cover by the looks of it. And certainly the very large base vehicles will absolutely will enjoy the cover because they fit perfectly within the same space. I personally couldn't be happier with the way this all worked out. And I think it looks beautiful with the troopers. Or oh, no matter what side you're playing with. Or who you're playing against. No matter what weird and wonderful things your opponent may bring against you. This is going to be an exceptional thing to play with and around okay we're finished now that's me for the week um we've had a good look at uh what i've achieved how i've done some of it uh quite quick in all fairness so if you need more detail do ask me because i'm happy to go into detail if that's what you want um but now i just want to talk about the product i'm really really pleased with it i'm very happy with the way it's came out um, everything you've looked at cost me about £100 all in, which I think for the volume of uh, terrain is brilliant. Um, and I'm really pleased with it. I think it really captures the look of Naboo. And uh, yeah, I would really encourage 
anyone to pick it up. Now, I would like to get more. Uh, so, and TT Combat do uh, the same kind of stuff, but like these bombed out versions. And as I advance in my project, I'm going to um, want to make it look more like a war-torn city than this pristine city. So I would love to get my hands on some of them. Right now that isn't on the cards, just you know, uh, one thing at a time. But uh, yeah, let's watch your space. I would very much love to get my hands on some of those and to, uh, um, to try to really kind of bring that bombed out uh, city to, uh, to the table. Anyway. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, I want to give you a quick sneak peek of what I'm working on. And I'd like to get you some of your comments if possible. So my plans are for this week. Is to working on this bit of kit. This is a Rebel uh, Arc Fighter from the Clone Wars. Uh, let me show you what it looks like in the flesh. So there we go. Real nice bit of detail. Wings open, closed, guns on the side. And this is one we're going to hopefully turn into something uh, very much in the keeping with a crashed uh, war vehicle. And this is what I'd like to create. Something which really encapsulates this crashed, blown to pieces plane. Uh, oh, looks like I've got that picture twice. But I'm going to try to carve it out to create something which kind of looks reminiscent to some of these. Now, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do that, but I've got these images on Pinterest because I wanted to give myself an idea of what was possible. So if you've got any kind of suggestions or uh, something you'd like to share, please do. Right, that's it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed that. I'll see you next week and we get to see how and uh, how well this uh, crashed arc fighter goes. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.